Hi guys, it is another chilly, rainy, stormy day here in the end times in what I guess is left of the paradise of western New York uh, where I hope the, the rain is washing the wildfire smoke uh, out of the sky here on this gloomy, depressing Tuesday morning, August 21st, 2018. So I'm just going to do what I do pretty much every day, and that is to go on the mainstream media to bring you uh, the news of how this planet is heading directly down the toilet. And we're going to, as I usually do, split this into two parts. So in part one, this will be the climate change meltdown roundup rant right here in the mainstream media today in the summer of 2018 to see more evidence that the planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire. And I'm going to start this rant out uh, with this, one, one, one of the most no shit Sherlock stories I have ever encountered or here in the mainstream media on Yahoo News from EcoWatch. This article, <clears throat> quote, we are climbing rapidly out of humankind's safe zone, close quote. New report warns dire climate warnings are not dire enough, huh? Offering a stark warning to the world, a new report released Monday, meaning yesterday, argues that the reticence of the world's scientific community trapped in otherwise healthy habits of caution and due diligence, <clears throat> their, their, their reticence to downplay the potentially irreversible and cataclysmic impacts of climate change is itself a threat that should no longer be tolerated if humanity is to be motivated to make the rapid and far-reaching transition away from fossil fuels and other emissions generating industries. And I would go on with this story and I think what I'm going to do guys is uh, I'm going to come back to this story. I'm going to pass this story off to my uh, my little milk toast twin over there at Collapse Chronicles. So if you would like to hear the rest of this uh, article about how dire climate warnings are not dire enough, then uh, head on over to Collapse Chronicles for the rest of that story. But we're going to plow on ahead through the mainstream media headlines this morning. <clears throat> How about beyond climate change despair, a way forward? Huh. This is Simon Lewis writing in The Guardian yesterday. <clears throat> Take it away. And uh, you guys, you, you know, my bullshit detected button and my no shit Sherlock button, you know, did not survive the monsoons of 2018. So you'll just have to decide which button I would be picking up at various points during this rant. <clears throat> okay, take it away, Simon Lewis, whoever you are. <clears throat> this is the summer when, for many, climate change got real. Despair is in the air. <clears throat> now a new scientific report makes the case that even fairly modest future CO2 emissions could set off a cascade of catastrophe. How do we deal with such news? <clears throat> Taking a step back from the gloom, we face the same three choices. <clears throat> Number one, reduce greenhouse gas emissions. 
mitigation. Number two, make changes to reduce the adverse impacts of these new conditions we create, adaptation, or number three, suffer the consequences. Solving climate change is about power, money, and political will. Thinking about climate change as a practical political problem helps avoid despair because we know that huge political changes have happened in the past and continue to do so. Close quote. Pick your button. No shit Sherlock or bullshit detected. Okay, what is on the minds of National Geographic? National Geographic, you know, that Rupert, that Rupert Murdoch, uh, little, uh, little rag. Uh, we have an exclusive from Rupert Murdoch and the boys and girls. Exclusive. Some Arctic ground is no longer freezing. Huh, even in winter, new data from the Arctic suggests some surface layers in the Arctic are no longer freezing. And if that continues, <coughs> if that continues, yeah, right. Greenhouse gases from permafrost could accelerate climate change. Wow! Do you think so? National Geographic. Huh. In April, uh, this team of climate scientists up there in the Arctic bored into the soil a few feet down and found, this is in April in the Arctic, and found thick slushy mud. Huh. Climatologist Sergei Zimov, who measures permafrost levels, said that was impossible. Huh. Yes. Where he was drilling in somewhere up there in the Arctic is one of the coldest spots on Earth. Even in late spring, ground below the surface should be frozen solid. Except this year, meaning 2018, it wasn't. Do you think so? Ah, uh, so much for the permafrost. Yep, we can kiss goodbye the permafrost. Anyway, what is Max Holmes, an Arctic scientist with the Woods Hole Research Center in Massachusetts? Quote, this really is astounding. Huh. Wow. <clears throat> but with measurements from other scientists nearby, and one an ocean away appearing to support Zimov's findings, some Arctic experts are weighing a troubling question. Hmm. Could a fall of the permafrost actually begin decades sooner than many people expect? A uh, decade sooner than many people expect in some of the Arctic's coldest and most carbon-rich regions, releasing trapped greenhouse gases, can you say methane, that could accelerate human-caused climate change. Yes, this is a troubling question. Could the methane bomb be blowing 
decades sooner than expected. Huh. Let's move on to those pesky wildfires out there in uh, the U.S. West. <clears throat> Here's just the latest research, no shit Sherlock research. Science says hotter weather turbocharges U.S. West wildfires and any, any other wildfires on the planet. Huh, never would have thought of this. As temperatures rise in the U.S. West, so do the flames. The years with the most acres burned by wildfires have some of the hottest temperatures. Wow, an Associated Press analysis of fire and weather data has found. As human calls climate change has warmed the world over the past 35 years, the land consumed by flames has more than doubled. Wow. I never would have thought of that. Quoting University of Alberta fire scientist Mike Flanagan, quote, the warmer it is, the more fire we see. There you go. Let's go over there to the Daily Mail. I love how the Daily Mail uh, twists uh, some of these scientific reports. Shocking NOAA interactive map reveals almost 2 million acres of land is on fire across the United States. <laughs> The west coast of the United States is now shrouded in smoke, not to mention western New York, from the 110 largest wildfires and over 1.9 million acres are or have been or have been ablaze with New fires reported in Idaho, Nevada, and Oregon, and smoke from these fires has traveled along the west to east jet stream to reach the east coast. Yes, as I've been reporting, uh, as I have been reporting uh, the past couple of days, and actually, the, the smoke uh, has gotten as far as France. And that's right next to the story from AP. Smoky skies and poor air from wildfires return to the northwest, uh, not to mention the northeast. Poor air quality will be common across parts of the Pacific Northwest this week as winds push smoke from surrounding wildfires into the region, forecaster said, air quality alerts are in effect for much of Washington State through Wednesday as smoky, hazy conditions are making a return to the Puget Sound region because of wildfires in British Columbia and the Cascade Mountains. Yeah, smoke could worsen into unhealthy levels today. <clears throat> Do you think so? Other air quality alerts are in place across eastern Washington and northern Idaho. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. But let's go... We're going to get out of the wildfire roundup to the to the food, the global food crisis roundup. I was uh, talking yesterday about how Delaware, how Delaware uh, has declared an agricultural emergency. So we're going to move to the shithole state of Missouri. Huh? <clears throat> Drought takes toll 
on Missouri farmers' crops and cattle. Parts of Missouri <coughs> are so dry that corn crops are suffering and hay for cattle is in short supply as water in Missouri becomes increasingly scarce. I would like to send some of this water in upstate New York over to Missouri, uh, where the cornfields here in New York are looking like Ireland uh, in the summer of 2018. But anyway, we're not here to talk about the, the flooding in New York. We're talking about the drought in Missouri. Missouri has had below average rainfall since last winter. The U.S. drought monitor map shows that nearly all of Missouri is now experiencing drought with several counties in northern and southwestern parts of the state especially hard hit. Much of the western U.S. is also experiencing drought, but Missouri is the only midwestern state with such severe conditions. There you go. The U.S. <coughs> Department of Agriculture says soil moisture is below normal in 80 percent of the state of Missouri today. Okay, from the farmers in the shithole state of Missouri to the farmers in the shithole state of California, where we see the no shit Sherlock story, farmers protest California water plan aimed to save salmon. Hundreds of California farmers rallied at the state capitol yesterday to protest state water officials' proposal to increase water flows in a major California river, a move state and federal politicians called an overreach of power that would mean less water for farmers in the Central Valley said Republican State Senator Anthony Canella, quote, if they vote to take our water, this does not end here. <coughs> we will be in court for 100 years. Uh-huh. Of course, <coughs> environmentalists and fishermen offered a different take on the other side of the Capitol to a much smaller audience. Quote, this is Noah Oppenheim of the Pacific Coast Federation of Fishermen's Associations. Quote, for the past 50 years, corporate agriculture has been getting fat. Salmon fisheries have been tightening belts. Yes, so this fight is all over uh, plans to change water flows in the Sacramento and San Joaquin River Delta to uh, benefit what's left, uh, an effort to protect the state's declining salmon population. Uh, the state estimates just 10,000 fall-run salmon returned to the San Joaquin Basin last year compared to 70,000 in 1985. State water officials have called the Delta, quote, an ecosystem in crisis. That's exactly what it is an ecosystem in crisis. All right, from the shithole state of California to the shithole state of New York, New York City specifically. All right, we have, we have some good news in the Numisphere. Oh yeah, New York City 
just took a historic step toward cutting its top source of climate pollution. Wow, a top New York City lawmaker announced a bill Monday to mandate dramatic energy use cuts in buildings, by far the biggest source of carbon dioxide in a historic move that could set a new standard for cities around the world. The legislation plans to require the city's largest buildings to reduce their energy use by 20% by the year 2030. And, and the sick, twisted joke about this, uh, guys, is that this absolutely limp dick do nothing to make one iota of difference uh, plan uh, to reduce the largest building's energy use by 20% in 12 years is, in fact, a historic step. That, that is the, the biggest tragedy in, in this sick, twisted, black comedy we call uh, reacting to climate change. This is the definition of a historic step. This is one more reason we are so fucked. If anybody on this goddamn planet is swallowing this unadulterated horse shit. Anyway, moving on from the shithole city of uh, New York City. I've already mentioned this story, but I guess it bears repeating uh, about the uh, Colorado River. Uh, if you're not aware of this, a vital reservoir otherwise known as Lake Mead. I'm, yeah, Lake Mead, a vital reservoir on the Colorado River <clears throat> will be able to meet the demands of the U.S. Southwest and Mexico for the next 13 months, but a looming shortage could trigger cutbacks in 2020. Uh, a forecaster from the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation echoes previous warnings that a nearly 20-year trend toward a dry, drier regional climate coupled with rising demand could drain so much water from the Lake Mead Reservoir that cutbacks would be necessary. Uh, Yep, I don't know how much this rain is uh, affecting the microphone. I need to check where I am on this roundup anyway. We're gonna move in a little, a little bit closer. All right, we're gonna move the mic a little bit closer for the rest of this, of this rant. Okay, don't know if my head is going to be cut off or not. Let's go over to the shithole country of Sweden. Sweden calls for nuclear reactors to be shielded from hot weather. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Sweden's nuclear energy regulator has asked plant operators to come up with plans in the coming months to shield their reactors from harmful hot weather. A number of Swedish nuclear reactors had to shut down or reduce their output as the summer heat wave sent temperatures to record highs in July with the seawater that is supposed to cool them becoming much warmer than normal. So we will see. I, I guess they'll just uh, put an ice wall 
uh, around the nuclear reactors. Okay, from the shithole country of Sweden to the shithole country of Australia. How about this for a sign of the end times? My computer is now getting rained on. How about this one from Time Magazine? Thirsty emus have invaded a town in southeast Australia amid worsening drought. An Australian mining town has been mobbed by emus. You know, they're kind of like Australian ostriches searching for food and water as the country's southeast continues to struggle with historic drought. Uh, the flightless birds began arriving in Broken Hill, New South Wales amid one of the state's driest spells are on record. Uh, large groups of emus have descended on the town where locals have been putting out food and water for them and at least five birds have been hit by cars in the past week. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> New South Wales, uh, Australia's most populous state in its agricultural para powerhouse <clears throat> has been declared in drought. Parts of the state have recorded the lowest level of rainfall ever this year with less than four tenths of one inch falling in some areas in July. Yeah. Uh, farmers have been hit with failing crops and are struggling to feed and water their livestock. So we have that story from the shithole country of Australia next to this one. <coughs> Australia weakens its commitment to Paris Climate Accord after government fractures. We have a fractured government in Australia. <clears throat> Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull on Monday stripped requirements for reducing greenhouse emissions from his centerpiece energy policy in the face of political opposition. Huh. Although the country still remains a signatory to the Paris Agreement, while stopping short of following the lead of Donald Trump and, withdraw and withdrawing from the Global Climate Accord, Australia removed any requirements, any requirements from its National Energy Guarantee Plan that would have mandated greenhouse emissions uh, from its power industry decreased by 26% between now and 2030. As Australia suffers through the worst drought in 60 years, Turnbull said he would seek to legislate emission reductions in the future called kicking the can down the road. What is going on? Let's go over there to the shithole country of India for today's update. Yesterday we were talking 800,000 uh, climate refugees. Now we're looking at rush to bring aid to two million, two million homeless as fears now grow over the spread of disease after floods in Kerala. Anyway, uh, yep, can you say cholera is the next thing we'll be hearing from from uh, from the shithole state of India. Here we go. What's going on with the latest mainstream media? Well, this is EcoWatch talking about geoengineering. Blotting out the sun to save the earth? 
Seriously? Science fiction does not always stay fictional. Space exploration, robots, and self-driving cars are just few of the modern-day wonders that once existed only as plot, de plot devices or fantastic theories. Our ability for turning science fiction notions into the stuff of every day... Would you get on with it? Anyway, uh, to this list we can now add geoengineering whether we want to or not. Yep. Uh, geoengineering ideas today are as numerous and varied as the scientific imaginations that spawn them. What usually ties them together is the goal of dramatically reducing global temperatures and or carbon emissions over a short period of time. Anyway guys, I think I've already hit 30 minutes. What this story basically is talking about is the absolute pipe dream. Let's get down to the bottom line of this wordy story. Geoengineering is extraordinarily risky. In a perfect world, we would never even consider it for fear that our actions could usher in the very dystopia we have seen in countless science fiction movies. But we need to be honest about where we are in the story of humanity and climate change. It is the third act. And while we would have to be desperate to try to geoengineer our way to a happy ending, there is just not that much time left to argue over the definition of the word desperate. Anyway, a couple more. All right, but maybe we won't have to worry about it because according to Fox News, we have an underwater Irish canyon is sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere. Who needs geoengineering when you have an underwater Irish canyon, canyon sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere? But we're going to wind up in Forbes magazine with probably the most honest headline of this entire rant, we are going to leave uh, our planet and our shithole solar system and go to planet Kelt 9B. Kelt 9B. Take it away, Forbes magazine. Hottest exoplanet ever discovered shows us the ultimate fate of planet Earth. There you go. If you want to see the ultimate fate of planet Earth, you do not need to uh, look to Venus or Mars. Go to Kelt 9b, the hottest exoplanet ever discovered, and you will find the future of planet Earth. But we're going to wrap up uh, today's climate change today's climate change roundup rant and head over to part two of this roundup rant where we look at all the various ways the planet is going to hell in a handbasket with no help from climate change coming up in one minute. Bye guys. Another rainy day in the monsoons. Get on your Harley and ride across the country while you can. Bye, guys.